A growing trend around the world shows that people are shying away from the boring MPVs and choosing three-row SUVs instead. That is one of the reasons why the Innova now chooses a more Land Cruiser-inspired design over the outgoing model. That's also the reason why the Hexa, which was derived from the Aria, sheds its MPV form factor and goes for a more butch SUV stance instead. But which one of the two is the better product? Let's find out. The Innova Crystal looks quite upmarket now with its clean lines, smooth contours and improved paint quality. It masks the people carrier form with bodywork that is wider than the glass house. Sharp designs for its headlights and taillights and flared wheel arches contribute further to that effect. It employs LED headlamps with projector beams, a smart looking two slat grille and large bumpers that give it a muscular stance. But the lack of any skid plates, roof rails or protective cladding does take away from its ambitions of looking more SUV than people carrier. But overall, the design is quite pleasing to the eye and does not look like a boring bread box on wheels. The Aria derived Hexa does a better job at sharing its previous MPV form and donning a more boot stance. Contributing to that effect are the massive 19 inch wheels, the chunky bodywork, the white grille, and the pull back headlights with their smoke finish and sinister looking detailing. The horizontal tail lights and the wide chrome bar connecting them highlight its width. Speaking of which, the Hexa is wider longer and almost as tall as the Krista. It has no problem coming across as the more muscular car of the two and that should work in its favour. Step in and you will also appreciate that the cabin has undergone a similar transformation. The dashboard looks smart despite its old school design. And though the cabin is finished in all black upholstery, the Hexa still comes across as a spacious car. But while the room for the occupants is generous, there are hardly any storage spaces and cubby holes when compared to the Innova. In fact, the Innova has so many of them that you might even forget what you stored where. Plenty of bottle holders also give it a better score with large families that love travelling together. It boasts of a larger infotainment screen, but the system isn't as feature-rich as the Hexas, which gets its own army of smartphone applications. Audio quality is comparable between the two. The design of the cabin looks more new age and upmarket, and the materials contribute to that effect further. The Innova also has better ergonomics and is also easier to get in and out of. Though a tad low on space than the Hexa, the seating in the second and third rows is more comfortable thanks to the larger size and the cushioning and the contouring of the seats. It impresses even when travelling full house. The Innova's roof-mounted AC vents also work better for overall air circulation than the Hexa's floor and B-pillar arrangement. The Innova also manages to pip the Hexa on kit with features like powered seats, keyless entry and go and LED headlamps. It also does a better job of spreading its equipment across multiple variants than packing it all in one range topping trim like the Hexa does. The cabin of the Innova Crista is a really nice place to be in. Feels quite pleasant in here. I like the overall design. I like the layout of the dashboard. I like that all the controls fall very easily at hand. It's all very ergonomic. What I also like is the instrumentation. It's set a little lower, however, it's angled upwards. So no matter what your steering position is, it's very easy to read the clocks. The Innova Crista offers three engine options. There are two diesels and there's a petrol. But as we have already established in our previous reviews, the diesels make more sense for the Crista. And in that, it's the 2.4, which is the natural rival for the Hexa. It can be had only with a 5-speed manual transmission. The automatic only comes on the 2.8. With an output of 140 PS and 343 Newton meters, it certainly isn't as powerful as the unit in the Hexa, but the performance figures suggest otherwise with quicker acceleration and roll-on figures even with a full house. I quite like this motor. It feels quite eager, quite refined for an MPV. It revs quite cleanly as well, and the meat of the power and the torque is delivered at a little over 2000 RPM. So overtakes don't really need any sort of planning, you can just pull them like that. And driving in city, you won't need frequent gear shifts. Speaking of gear shifts, they feel a tad notchy. The clutch isn't too heavy, but the pedal has a springy nature to it. Add to it the heavy steering and the Innova becomes quite a handful to drive in city conditions. The Innova Crista continues to use a body-on-frame construction like its predecessor, however, Though it takes on undulations and potholes really well, if you are running a light load or with just a couple of people in the car, it does tend to feel a little bouncy when you are hitting these undulations. Load it up, have a full house and the ride quality is much better. 
that feels quite taut around bends with relatively low vertical movement for a vehicle this tall. Handling isn't unnerving then. Braking is quite good too, both under light as well as full load. Both these cars, the Innova and the Hexa, offer you a commanding driving position as compared to some of the other crossoverish 7 seater SUVs like the BRV or uh, the Logi for that matter. As far as getting the judgment of the vehicle goes though, or the all round visibility goes, the Hexa does a better job than the Innova. It edges ahead of the Innova with a slimmer dashboard profile, a broader bonnet, which gives you an easier judgment of the frontal length or the frontal corners. The Hexa only comes with a diesel motor and lets you choose between two states of tune. The range-topping one that we are driving right now gives you 400 Newton meters of twist from its 2.2 litre Varicom motor. Like the Innova, this one too comes with driving modes that let you alter engine response to suit urban or highway use. While the Innova proved to be the more fuel-efficient car in the city, the Hexa sipped marginally lesser fuel out on the highway. In the Hexa, the Varicom motor comes with a choice of an automatic or a manual gearbox and the latter can also be had with a 4x4 drivetrain. The throws of the gear shifter are quite long and also quite rubbery, which kind of becomes cumbersome when you're using it in the urban environment. Add to it a long travel for the clutch pedal, a heavy clutch at that and an even heavier steering and then you realize that the Hexa is just as difficult in the city as the Innova. Steering has a fair bit of kickback too every time you hit a pothole, but out on the highway or around bends, you will appreciate its communicative nature. Like the Innova Krista, the Hexa also uses a body-on-frame construction, which gives it the rigidity to go off the road without breaking a sweat. But despite that, it displays some amazing manners around bending roads. It's also very good at bump absorption and no matter how many seats you fill up, it still remains quite composed. Simply put then, if you travel full house often, the Innova offers a better ride. If you travel in ones or twos, the Hexa feels more pliant. Safety is paramount and more so when you are likely to travel together as a family. The Innova edges ahead of the Hexa in this regard by offering three airbags as standard and up to seven airbags on the top trim compared to the Hexa's six airbag setup. It also gets ISOFIX points for safely securing child seats. While no crash test ratings were available during this test, we believe that the new age Innova could offer better structural safety than the ARIA-derived Hexa. The better features, comfort, safety, performance and the fabled rock-solid reliability of the Innova all come at quite a premium though. So much so that you can easily buy yourself a top-end Hexa with either an automatic transmission or even a 4x4 drivetrain and still have plenty of money left for accessories and personalization. In that regard then, the Hexa is easily the more value-for-money product and a strongly poised one at that.